Coming up tonight on America's Hope, Iran unleashes a barrage of missiles and rocket fire upon Israel. The question is, what will Israel do to respond? And do not forget that hostages are still being held by Hamas in Gaza. What's being done for them? That and more is our focus on Israel tonight. Good evening from New York, I'm Kelly Wright, and this is America's Hope. We're glad that you could join us this hour. We're focusing on Israel. In the aftermath of Iran unleashing a barrage of missiles and projectiles over the weekend over Israeli airspace, something's quite clear. Israel now faces more challenges to its national security. And how does that impact the rest of the world? We'll be talking about this tonight with Sharon Haskell of the Knesset and Yigal Karamon of Memory. That's the Middle East Media Research Institute. We'll be talking about possible action Israel may take in response to the Iranian attack. Plus, let us not forget, there are still hostages being held in Hamas captivity in Gaza. So tonight, we'll also be talking to family members of hostages about their hope to see their loved ones returned home soon. I recently traveled to Israel to speak with those family members plus to reach out to find out if there's hope for Israel. That's our subject tonight, focus on Israel. Let's get started. My first guest tonight is a member of the Knesset, Sharon Haskell joins us from Israel, and she, of course, is someone very acquainted and familiar with how the Knesset is perhaps responding to Iran, if there is a response in order. Uh, Sharon, thank you for joining us this hour. Will Israel respond to Iran's uh, attack? Oh, we reserve the right for the response. Um, look, Iran has declared war. This is a sovereign country who's actually attacking another sovereign country. And just to remind you, Kelly, um, this is after years and years of them threatening Israel uh, uh, in, in so many spe speeches uh, where, uh, where they say they call for the complete annihilation of the state of Israel. So, I, I mean, this would have came sooner or later. And so I think that our response has to be strategic. What we've seen on this weekend you know, it's only the, uh, the like the uh, the tip of the iceberg of what uh, of the iceberg of what can actually happen. If any other country in Europe or you know in the Middle East would have been attacked that way, the results would have been devastating. And so we have to make sure that Iran doesn't have these capability. And just try to imagine if they would have nuclear capability, would they hold back? Probably not. And so that has to be on focus, our mission, to make sure that this, uh, uh, you know, th this, uh, this crazy regime, who's the biggest instigator of terror, the biggest um, destable, uh, uh, you know, in, uh, destabler in the Middle East, is, uh, you know, is, is not threatening our day-to-day -day life and our stability here in the region. Even going back to October 7th, uh, 2023, with the attack by Hamas, which uh, of course was was pushed forward and, and the idea hatched by the Iranians. So with this happening now, it's, it's, it's really clear that Iran's no longer operating through its proxies, but as you've stated, making a direct attack on Israel, attacking, we should point out, the little Satan and holding in reserve to attack the big Satan, which would be America. Absolutely, and that's why it's a common interest. I mean, what we've seen, the operation uh, to intercept, and we intercepted 99% of those missiles and drones and UAVs, um, that was a collaboration, uh, you know, of America with Israel, with the, uh, uh, the UK, with Saudi, with Jordan and with Egypt as well. And you know what? That actually gives me hope. It gives me hope that cooperation and partnership here in the Middle East is something that can actually wor work uh, when we try to defend our communities. And if I can use, Kelly, please, this opportunity to thank the American government and the American people for the love, uh, the prayers, 
and the support that we receive from you. You cannot imagine how much strength it actually gives us to know what an incredible friend we had that stand, stand by us. Do you still hold to that, that, that truism that you've talked about? Absolutely. Look, Iran is on this race. Uh, uh, and, 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 and as the biggest force in the Middle East, of, uh, you know, they're, they're the biggest instigator of terror. They're, they're the biggest funder of terror. You know, what they have in Yemen, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, um, these are battalions, armies of Iran that are sitting on our borders and are attacking us on a daily basis. But look what the Houthis are doing. They're doing that on the Iranian order to attack commercial ships. I mean, American troops has had lost their lives fighting uh, against Iran, which are, you know, the Houthis are only their proxies. And so, you know, w when you look on what's happening here, this is just the start. They are stretching the red lines. And if we don't give a straight answer to Iran, they'll continue to push the lines. Why did they instigate the 7th of October attack? I mean, they funded it. They planned it. They uh, paid for it. They built those uh, vicious, horrifying weapons and shipped them into Gaza and into Lebanon to try and make as much destruction, uh, destruction as possible. Why did they do that? The first reason was the closer connection that was forming between Israel, Saudi, and the Americans. Okay, that triangle got them so much uh, to fear that they instigated one of the most horrific attack that you can ever imagine. I mean, this is every mother worst nightmare that actually came true. And, and, and so, you know, when they are stretching those red lines, the world needs to understand we are just the front line. If Israel fall, the next one is America. The next one would be Europe. They will not hold back. You know, I've talked about uh, that day, October 7th, and where you were and, and how it hit you, uh, especially being a former member of the Israeli Defense Force. Um, take me back to that day, October 7th, and, and how you reacted once you realized what was unfolding. Wow. Um, I just felt completely helpless. I mean, I was a combat soldier during the time of the Second Intifada. I see videos, I mean, live Facebook that are coming up, you know, on, on friends and families' uh, 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 social media accounts, on how their family members are being murdered in the most brutal ways. I mean, you cannot imagine the, the, that, that, that kind of helpless sense. And to me, it really feels like you know, we failed our grandparents. Our grandparents have been through the most horrific persecution that you can ever imagine, and they survived it. They survived it so that, you know, their grandkids will have a shelter, will have a safe place without anti-Semitism, a place where we can defend ourselves by ourselves, that we're not at the mercy of any kind of ruler or, or government, and we're capable of defending our own children for the first time in centuries and and for me it really feels like a big failure I mean many of them are not alive anymore and in a, in a sense I'm, I'm grateful for that because I have no it would have completely completely destroyed them to actually see a, a, a genocide you know such a massacre in the most horrific ways babies being burnt little girls being raped in front of their parents I mean I cannot explain to you that feeling and that uh, I will carry for the rest of my life. Hi everybody, I hope you're enjoying this episode so far of America's Hope. If you'd like to see it in its entirety, just click on the link below. Thanks for watching.